Hi there, I'm Dr. Patty Havey, and today we are going to be talking about all different things based on cervical mucus, okay? It might look like we're doing a cooking class here. We're not. I'm just using some random household items to kind of show you the way that your cervical mucus kind of changes throughout your cycle without using real icky sticky um, examples. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to be talking about the way your cervical mucus changes starting at the beginning of your cycle, kind of after your period, the way it kind of changes as fertility approaches, really show you what fertile cervical mucus looks like, and then we'll talk about what happens in the second half of your cycle, the luteal phase when progesterone is the dominant hormone. So for starters, we're going to get going. We're going to crack this egg. You get to see my culinary skills at play. We're going to separate this yolk. And we are ready to begin, you guys. All right, so for starters, let's talk about the dominant hormones in both parts of your cycle, okay? So we start with the follicular phase. This is the phase of your cycle where your eggs are actually maturing and developing. And during this time, your eggs are producing, the developing follicles are producing a hormone called estrogen. And estrogen, when you hear that, I want you to think water. That's gonna create a really, really, really good fertile cervical mucus. And estrogen is kind of the more dominant hormone in that first half of your cycle, your follicular phase. Whereas when we think progesterone, we think the second half of our cycle or the luteal phase. And progesterone is where things get really dry, sticky, and kind of creamy. Um, so we're going to see the way these hormones actually affect the secretions that our body produces. It might sound a little gross. It's not as gross as you think. And in order to observe these signs, all you have to do is take a look at your underwear or just notice when you're wiping after you go to the bathroom. It's super simple. It doesn't have to be intense. It doesn't have to be gross. Just look at it as a sign that your body is actually giving to you to kind of tell you what is going on inside of your body, okay? All right, give me a second. I'm gonna toss this egg yolk away and then we're gonna go and we're gonna jump in to our next kind of descriptions of all of this fertile cervical mucus, okay? All right, here we go. I have a bottle of lotion. I'm squirting some out so I can kind of give you guys a quick little view. So for starters, after you have your period, all right, which we know is the beginning of our menstrual cycle, um, we have that big, beautiful red blood that kind of then turns brown and, and pitters away. And after you have your period, you may have a little bit of a dry time. Again, this follicular phase, this first half of our cycle tends to vary between people. And so um, everybody's kind of different in how many dry days they have before cervical mucus kind of starts showing again. Um, so it's going to be a little bit dry or no secretions after that period finally wraps up, which I'm sure you'll be happy that it did. Then after that, we kind of start to see a little bit of changes. And the next type of cervical mucus that you're going to see is something that's kind of, it's sticky. Um, it's sticky and it's not going to be super clear. I kind of describe it kind of like a boogie, okay? So if you can see, I have some glue on my hands and glue and it gets really tacky. That's kind of what it looks like. So you're actually going to be able to kind of pull it out and ball it up and that's what you're actually kind of going to see. This is, this is that sticky kind of after your period mucus. It's usually going to be, um, not super clear. It'll have a little bit of clarity to it, but it's mainly going to be just kind of sticky looking. So another good way to think of this is this is like Elmer's glue when it starts to dry, how it gets tacky or even rubber cement. If you ever remember using that making photo albums um, and when you roll it up, it gets kind of ooey gooey in spots. And that's kind of what the sticky after your period before fertility um, kind of kicks in. After that, we're going to start warming up and we're warming towards fertility, right? Those follicles are starting to mature and so they're starting to release more and more and more estrogen. So then I'm going to grab my lotion here. Then we're going to get this kind of creamy consistency mucus. So it's not going to be sticky and stick together. It's not tacky in any way, shape or form. It's just exactly like a little bit of hand lotion would be. It's kind of like that. Sometimes it's not quite as this white opaque. It's, it can be a little bit more clear. Um, but that really cream, you can like rub it between your fingers. It's very smooth. Um, that's a really good example. Look, I can put it right in my hands of uh, what creamy cervical mucus would, would be like. And that's as you're kind of approaching that fertile window. So it can be cloudy, it can be opaque, but it's going to have that really nice kind of, um, it's, it's literally exactly like a hand lotion. Then once we're really, really, really approaching our fertile window, okay, our estrogen is really pulsating then. It means your fertile window is approaching. 
and your cervical mucus is going to change. That is when your cervical mucus is going to go from being sticky to the creamy to then this beautiful raw egg white consistency mucus. And I'm going to show you right here so you guys can see it. Do you see this stretch that I kind of get with the egg white? I know it sounds weird, but that long stretching is actually exactly what your fertile cervical mucus does. It creates this really nice scaffolding. Again, this is just an egg white, guys. This isn't real. This is just from an egg, but it very closely mimics exactly what your body's like. And if you want to know what fertile cervical mucus looks like, look when you're making breakfast tomorrow at that egg that you have in front of you. It's going to just drip down and see how the strands stick. If you pull it between your fingers, it kind of, it will expand. Real cervical mucus, um, it will literally stretch from finger to finger and you could really see that big, beautiful stretch. But I'm showing you kind of on a larger scale here when we're looking at that egg white. So that's what raw egg white consistency vertical mucus. Now, obviously you're not gonna have this much. It's just gonna be a small amount in between your, your fingers. And what you can kind of think about um, fertile cervical mucus is it's slippery, slidey, and it stretches. And I, when I see that stretch, it really makes me think of scaffolding. It helps the sperm swim up. It almost creates a passageway to help those sperm get up into your uterus um, and get as close as it can to your fallopian tubes to help um, fertilize that egg. It's really going to help facilitate the journey up your vagina. Um, and again, let's go back to this, okay, right? What is cervical mucus and why do we have it? So this is mucus that is secreted from your cervix. Your cervix is that little opening that goes between your uterus and your um, vagina. So it's kind of like a small donut shaped little guy and it has a really tiny, tiny opening in it, kind of like a mini donut. Um, and that opening gets bigger and smaller to release cervical mucus. Now, cervical mucus actually helps to protect our body when we're not in our fertile window because that passageway is pretty important, right? It's going from our vagina into our uterus and we really wanna protect that uterine cavity. So that's another reason why your cervical mucus changes. When we get this raw egg white consistency mucus, that's what allows everything to open up and sperm to actually get in and swim through. Whereas think of trying to swim through lotion or sticky, sticky glue, it's not gonna happen really easily, right? And so that's the reason that this fertile cervical mucus is really important and why your body automatically does it. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands off and then we're gonna keep talking. All right, so let's go ahead and keep talking some more about what happens then in that second phase. So you got your fertile cervical mucus, you saw that long, stretchy, egg white cervical mucus that happens right before you're about to ovulate. Why? Because those follicles are big, juicy, they're secreting estrogen, and all that estrogen changes your cervical mucus. It also tells your brain, hey, let's go ahead and secrete luteinizing hormone and tell our ovaries to ovulate. It sends your brain the message that we're ready to ovulate, we're big enough, there's enough estrogen around, our cervical mucus is looking good. Let's pop that egg out. So that's kind of what estrogen does from those developing follicles. After this point, the LH surges, you'll see your LH peak if you're hopefully using ovulation tests. So again, as you are seeing this egg white cervical mucus, we're also gonna start seeing probably our ovulation tests begin to darken and we're looking for that last darkest day, which is gonna be our LH peak day, right? And we know that when we find our LH peak, we're going to ovulate 24 hours after that. So, after we ovulate, what's left behind is the corpus luteum, which is just basically the little cocoon that your egg was in in the ovary. Um, it's left over after that egg was released, and that corpus luteum is then going to produce the hormone progesterone. So again, estrogen, first phase. Progesterone, second phase. Progesterone is actually what kind of makes things kind of thick and creamy again. Um, it really makes things gunk back up together because it says, okay, we had our chance for fertility and now it's time to protect that uterus, protect that potentially fertilized egg. Um, and so in that second half of your cycle, you will see your fertile mucus go change down to, uh, to sticky mu mucus and then you'll probably go dry again. You may still continue to see kind of sticky or somewhere in between sticky and creamy mucus for the rest of your cycle. And that's the progesterone making it, um, saying basically the door's closed, the fertile window is closed, um, and, and we're kind of in potentially making baby time period. So again, progesterone is what's kind of making those changes. So there's not a lot to it. Tracking your cervical mucus is so easy. It's not gross. Again, we just use simple things around the house to show you. And I would encourage you to go get out your bottle of lotion, go crack an egg open and give it a feel. And then also get out some old tacky glue and feel that kind of tack 
start paying attention to those those sensations that you're seeing because your body really is telling you so much especially as we approach that fertile window so um, again fertile cervical mucus it's great to see people have varying quantities of it and this is a common question I get a lot is can you still get pregnant if you don't have fertile cervical mucus and the answer is as long as you are ovulating the answer is yes you can still get pregnant without copious amounts of egg white cervical mucus it could be that you're just not noticing it or your body just isn't a huge cervical mucus producer um, some people will notice more of just wetness instead of this like very distinct slipperiness also, this can vary cycle to cycle, and every woman is super, super unique when it comes to that. So I hope you guys learned a lot today. Make sure you follow us, like, and subscribe to Premom. I'd love to keep bringing you more fertility tips. If you have any questions, ask them below or any comments. I'm curious to know if you've ever tested your cervical mucus and what your thoughts are. Did you ever think about that while you're cracking eggs in the morning? <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out. We hope you learned a lot today, and thank you so much for being part of the Premom community. Take care.